जय राधा कुंज भी आ
So by the grace of uh, the devotees, they have requested me to speak about some of the pastime meanings that we can derive on our, in our personal life that would help us in our pra practice and our progress in Krishna consciousness. Mm. This is a very, what we say, unique incarnation of the Lord, the Bore incarnation of the Lord. Omegyan timirandasya gira jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri guru namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri makti bhakti vedanta swamin niti namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Sitarine Panchakalpa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Pei Bacha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. When Lord Brahma was in the process of uh, helping to bring about the next manifestation of the creation, he came out of his work to notice something was amiss or something was wrong. And then he was informed, yes, the earth planet is no longer in its orbit. It has fallen from its orbit into the unlimited deep ocean known as Garbhodak Ocean, huge ocean that separates the material and spiritual worlds. Um, Brahma's confused. He is the most intelligent person. He is a person who knows what to do in all situations. In fact, he's given that post as leader of the universe because of his great intelligence, but now he is bewildered. And we see, you know, also in our own devotional life, we may run up against some situation where we don't know how to act or whether we should act at all. Some thing that causes some confusion, some bewilderment. But what did Brahma do? He knew that he couldn't solve the problem himself. That was the, the beauty or the magnitude of his intelligence. He immediately diverted that this situation needs guidance from the Supreme Personality of God in himself. So in the same way when we find ourselves in a confusing situation, something that is uh, unexpected or something that we don't know how to deal with, um, we go to the Lord because we know that by taking shelter of the Lord, praying to the Lord, seeking the Lord's guidance, and as Prabhupada mentions in this particular explanation, he says, then there will be no impediments in your execution of devotional service. <laughs> so that's a very important principle to, to understand because we are limited, and the problems that we face sometimes are unlimited or difficult or seem like way beyond our ability to, to even confront what to speak to solve. But there is a solution, and that solution lies with the all-powerful Supreme Lord who wants to help, likes to help, and is eager to always help his devotee. So when we know that, then we can also, our, our prayers will never go unanswered because we know that the Lord is very eager to help his devotees. So Brahma, 
he immediately starts to think of the Supreme Lord and he goes into a type of meditation. When he meditates, while he's meditating, during his meditation, something unusual happens. From one of his nostrils, a little tiny animal appears. <laughs> and it's small, it's about the size of a thumb, about that big. And he's looking at it, and he's not there, he's with Marichi, he's with uh, the four Kumaras, he's with other sages, and they're all looking at it. What is that? Who is that? And then immediately, after a few quick seconds, that same little tiny animal flies up in the sky and becomes as big as the sky itself. And it turns into a huge, gigantic boar. Boar is a male pig. Um, there's, there are male pigs and there are boars. Boar is a special species of male pigs that run wild in the jungles. And they have tusks and they're very ferocious. You don't want to meet one of those <laughs> because they do and can kill people. They, are, they're, they run fast and they have very powerful horns. <clears throat> so that, and then everyone is looking, that must be the Supreme Lord himself, Jai Sisi Panchatat Ki Jai. And everyone starts to see, it must be God himself. No, nothing else could be so amazing. And that the most important thing, or most interesting thing is, it's beautiful. <laughs> Now, are male pigs beautiful? <laughs> nobody, nobody puts a male pig in their room and hangs it on the wall and says, oh, this is my favorite picture. <laughs> Just see how beautiful th this pig is. <laughs> nobody does that. <laughs> Boars are not so, you know, they, they wouldn't win any beauty contest, nor could they even enter the beauty contest What to speak about winning it. <laughs> But this boar is huge, and he's so beautiful, and everyone's amazed. And then they realize it must be none other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. So they start offering beautiful prayers. And at one point during the prayers, this boar smiles. <laughs> he smiles at the, the, at the devotees, who are offering these beautiful prayers to give assurance. Yes, your prayers are being accepted. It's me. <laughs> it's me, the Supreme Lord. And so, <clears throat> this begins the particular pastime. Now, why does the Lord accept such forms? Sometimes people think that the form the Lord accepts is the, is the Lord in the sense that it describes Him. But that is actually incorrect. The Lord likes to play. One of His natures is that He is very playful. <laughs> and we see that children are playful and sometimes there's a few adults who are like that too. Those who are actually happy, <laughs> they're playful. <laughs> and. Uh, so the Lord, in order to play, and Prabhupada gives an interesting uh, analogy, and he tells a story where one prime minister, his name was Gladstone, he was a prime minister, I think of, I don't know, England or something, big, very important person. So one man came to meet him, and his secretary came out to meet the man, said the prime minister is busy, you wait, and then after some time you can meet him. So the man is waiting, and he's waiting a long time. And after an hour, he gets impatient, thinking, what is the prime minister doing? So he decides to go peek. And so he goes up to the door, opens the door, looks in, and the prime minister is on his hands and his knees, and his little child is on his back, and he's playing horsey with the little boy. <laughs> And they're running around the room and he's carrying his little kid and they're laughing and the kid is having fun. So he's the prime minister of a country and there he's playing piggyback with his little kid in the office. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, 
That's the nature of life. Sometimes a big man will do something very simple or very ordinary or very playful. So that's Krishna. He does that. So he's the Supreme Lord, but he takes the position of an ordinary boar, which is not really <laughs> one of the favorite animals of anybody. <laughs> but then again, why did he do that? Because there is a certain reason behind his taking that particular form. Because the, oh, the, the earth fell into the Garbadak Ocean, and it's understood that the bottom of the, of the ocean is a dirty place. Any ocean in the world, if you go there, it's a mess. <laughs> you can't go down because the ocean is so deep. Sometimes it's one or two miles deep. So nobody goes down there. Even scuba divers can't go that low because, uh, you know, they'll be eaten by big fish that are down there. <laughs> so it's, nobody goes to the bottom of the ocean, but it's not a very clean place. So a boar has to go to dirty places. So in order to complement his particular mission, he takes the form that is appropriate. He takes the form of a boar like that. So this is interesting. But he is Krishna himself, and he does everything for his own enjoyment. And he's inviting us to take part in his pastimes too, by hearing about his pastimes, by remembering his pastimes, by telling others of his pastimes. And that way we actually share the enjoyment that the Lord experiences when he's having these different pastimes. In the material world, everyone wants enjoyment, right? Everyone plans their life for happiness. Of course, it doesn't always work that way, but that's the way life is. Oh, everyone plan no one gets up in the morning and says, today I'm going to have a very miserable day. That's my plan. <laughs> no, everyone thinking, okay, now I'm going to arrange my day in such a way as, you know, I'm going to be happy. Right? I remember I was in one, uh, this was many years ago at uh, Indra Jumna Maharaj's, uh, what is that called? Uh, those festivals he has, Woodstock festivals. And you know who, people who come to the Woodstock festival. You can't tell what species they are. <laughs> so I was giving this lecture there at the Woodstock festival and people from the crowd were listening. And I was saying, no one gets up in the morning and says, I'm going to be miserable today. Everyone plans to be a And I said to everyone, isn't that true? And one, some group of men said, no, no, we want to be really miserable. <laughs> I thought, oh, there goes that philosophy. <laughs> I met someone who doesn't fit into our philosophy. <laughs> so, but everyone doesn't think like that, unless you're, unless you're completely insane. Uh, but everyone wants to be happy. So, but we try to be happy, how? Through the material energy. We try to somehow contact with some kind of activity to in order to satisfy our senses or our mind in some form or another. And a lot of times, most of the times, practically all of the times, it leads to some kind of unhappiness, disappointment, frustration. That's the nature of material life. Everyone wants happiness, everyone gets something else. <laughs> That's just the way this world is, works like that. If you think, well, I'm different, I'm gonna be happy, despite the fact that nobody else has been so far, I'm gonna be the first one, and then I'll write a book, and then I'll teach everyone else how to do it. <laughs> but it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> Material life is meant to give you misery. That's what it's for. But then there is happiness, and that's in, with Krishna. Now Krishna invites, and I use that word very strongly, he invites his devotees to take part in his pastimes by hearing about him, by remembering him, by uh, studying these pastimes. And actually, because the Lord's pastimes are non-different than the Lord, they're on the absolute platform. That's the nature of spiritual. Spiritual means there's no differences between the names. The Lord's names, 
His forms, his qualities, his activities, his entourage, they're all absolute. So when you come in contact with the Lord's pastimes, which are, we, we use the Sanskrit term, ananda chinmaya ras. That means they're full of transcendental happiness. Even when Krishna's killing a demon, it's fun. <laughs> he has fun. And the devotees who watch it, they also have fun watching the demon being killed. <laughs> of course, we're nonviolent. <laughs> But still, Krishna benedicts the demons by killing them and therefore he has fun because he's giving them actually what they need, some liberation from their material evilness or material demoness. So that's Krishna. And so he invites us. So we take part in these pastimes we enjoy. We actually joy. And if you absorb yourself in Krishna's pastimes, you actually enter into these pastimes. It's actually a fact. You can actually become part of the pastime as you absorb yourself more and more in hearing about Krishna's pastimes. Especially when you hear about it from pure devotees. So one of the lessons that we can learn from this particular pastime is that here's where enjoyment is. <clears throat> Is if you're looking for real enjoyment, you find it in Krishna. And you find it in Krishna's pastimes or when you chant Krishna's name, Kirtan. And so that is, an, that is called, called the Maha form of enjoyment. <laughs> because Krishna's names are so nice and when we glorify the name. Now if we were singing rock and roll songs, even if we used the same melodies, we wouldn't get this, that happiness. Even if we used the same melodies we use for bhajans, just change the words to something like, I can't get no satisfaction, and I try, and I try, and I try. And that's what happens. You get no satisfaction. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's the Rolling Stones really told us where it's at. <laughs> you don't get any satisfaction. But in Krishna's pastimes, they're, they're ananda chinmaya ras. That means they're full of spiritual happiness and ultimately spiritual purification once consciousness becomes elevated. And so Krishna is inviting us to take for his, his uh, association by hearing about him more and more. So now, he, of course, the Lord appeared in two different times and he performed this pastime as Lord Bore. One time he killed the demon Another time he lifted the earth from the Garbhadak ocean. So now, in this particular pastime, he dives into the ocean, goes all the way down, and picks the earth up on his tusks, and he holds it up. And now he is, everyone is seeing such a beautiful manifestation. And this is the interesting point. I think we made this point before, is that Krishna is beautiful in any manifestation of his forms. As we said, nobody says sees a boar is beautiful, but Krishna as a boar is the most beautiful. <laughs> the most beautiful because he can take any form and transform it by his personal presence into something attractive. <laughs> I was just thinking of something. Should I say it? Yes. You're sure? You're not going to like me. <laughs> Get this guy out of the class, you know. Find another speaker. <laughs> you know, so we say, you know, I used to see, you know, a lot of ugly girls would join our movement. <laughs> and, and, uh, I mean, I mean, some of the guys are ugly too, but you know, but then I saw them. no, no, really good-looking girls join our movement because they think, you know, we don't need it. <laughs> But, but then after a while, you see them and they're starting to become Krishna conscious. They're not ugly anymore. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it's the same person. <laughs> yeah, isn't that true? Yeah, everybody can tell. Nobody else will say it except me, but <laughs> it's true. Is that when you become Krishna consciousness, even if, you're the, if, you, even if you won an ugly contest, you know, you're the most ugliest person in the world. You could actually become beautiful 
by performing Krishna consciousness. And if you're ready, beautiful, watch out. <laughs> then, you're, then you're the walking Lakshmi and all the, all the guys can't even stand up straight. They fall and they crash into the poles. And <laughs> so yeah, but this is Krishna consciousness because the spirit is beautiful. And when the spirit becomes energized by the presence of Krishna, it, it, it energizes the body and the body becomes attractive more and more and more by the presence of the ever awakening soul in its connection with Krishna. Yeah. So Krishna, when he pairs as a, a boar, he's beautiful, <laughs> really beautiful. <laughs> so now he picks up the, uh, uh, the earth and when he touches the earth, he impregnates the earth and they have a kid then between Bhumi Devi and Varaha Devi and that child is called Boma. He's Boma. But later as he grows up he gets into the wrong association and he starts hanging around with demons and he starts becoming like his association and at one time he starts causing trouble to others and then at one point Krishna decides it's time to kill my son. <laughs> so he kills him. <laughs> now Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Samoham Savabhuteshu Namedvaisistina Priya. I'm equal to everyone, I envy no one, I'm not partial, but anyone who renders devotional service is a friend, and I am a friend to them. So Krishna will treat the living entities as they approach. So it says, even if a demon becomes a, a devotee, Krishna will glorify that person and give that person all facilities in devotional service. But if a devotee becomes a demon, then Krishna will treat that person like a demon. <laughs> so Krishna is equal, even if it's his own son. So in this case, it was Bhomasura, so Krishna killed him and also liberated him from that. So that was son was born by the contact of the earth and uh, Varahade. When the Lord got up from the ocean, he's wet, so he decides to shake the water off his body. So he's going like this, and he's shaking. And all the water starts falling onto the earth and it grows into a type of grass called kusa grass. We use that in worship. Have you ever seen kusa grass? We have it, right? Yeah. It's really sharp. It can you actually use it as a knife almost in some cases when it's big. I've seen big pieces of kusa grass. It looks like a knife. Uh, but that was that was produced when the Lord actually shook his body from the water and fell into the earth and this grass special grass grows and we use that for worship yes the devotees who do puja they know so the Lord performed so many activities in this particular pastime and then later on of course when the demons saw that the Lord had picked up the earth uh, he attacked the Lord. Now this why this demon who was Hiranyaksha, the brother of Hiranyakashipu, one of the fallen members of Jijai and Vijay from the spiritual world, he had caused the earth to fall into the ocean. Why? Because he was greedy. Well, for what? For gold. And Prabhupada says the modern day demons are drilling the earth for oil. And because they keep drilling the earth for more and more oil, they're disturbing the natural balance of the earth. And that's why there are many what we call cataclysms in the earth, earthquakes and various types of weather, weather disasters. All of this is doing to exploiting the earth because the earth is the property of the Lord. It's the Lord's energy. It's called Mother Nature. Krishna is the father and Nature is the mother. Nature provides whatever the living entities need as mother provides for the family. In the same way, nature provides for us. So this demon was just taking more and more gold out of the earth and the earth got so imbalanced because of that, 
it fell from its orbit into the our Garbhadakshai ocean. So Prabhupada said, uses this analogy. Today the demons are taking more and more oil out of the earth and then you'll, there'll always be earthly disturbances and more and more. You know, they, we, there's at least 300 to 400 different earth cataclysms every year recorded so much, you know, in different parts of the world. And, you know, land masses breaking off and tornadoes, high winds, forest fires, droughts, pestilence. Now we have pestilence. All of this is due to exploiting the earth, exploiting the animals, exploiting each other. It has nothing to do with economics or some kind of political mismanagement. It's all about it's all about exploitation of the energy of the Lord for uh, various types of vicious kind of sense gratification. So this is where we are today. Uh, therefore, we need Lord Bohr <laughs> to come and rectify the situation. But he'll, he's, he's come in the form of what? The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So when we chant the holy names of the Lord, we're actually bringing in the Lord's mercy in order to purify the atmosphere. If you want to purify the world, chant Hare Krishna, that's all. Nothing else will work because the holy name of the Lord is Krishna himself. I was just reading yesterday in one particular verse, Prabhupada wanted to make the point, the holy name of the Lord is Krishna. There's no difference between Krishna and the holy name. And then he says, no difference. <laughs> no difference. No, so Krishna's name is Krishna himself. And that's the incarnation in this age to purify the devotee, purify the environment, and purify everyone else. Chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So the more we do it here, the devotees go out regularly and on Harinam, and that's wonderful. Because of that, this temple is successful. Because Lord Chaitanya's whole movement is to spread the glories of the Holy Name everywhere and anywhere. And because Lord Chaitanya is personally present here, along with his associates, the Panchatattva, and devotees are really aware how to please Lord Chaitanya, have kirtan. <laughs> more and more kirtan. Just have kirtan. This, uh, Lord Nityananda's appearance day is tomorrow. And there's one kirtan that Lord Nityananda had. It went on for three months. Three months without stop. And nobody ate, nobody drank, nobody even remembered who they were. <laughs> Three months. That was right at the house of Raghava Pandit just before they arrived in Navadvipdam. I'll tell that story tomorrow for the Bhagavatam class. The beautiful pastime. So the holy name of the Lord is Krishna himself in this age. But whenever Krishna comes, he comes to purify the but he comes to give pleasure to his devotees. And that's the main thing why he comes, to give pleasure to his devotees. As Prabhupada explains in this pastime, if he wanted to kill that demon, it would have been no problem. He can just, he can just say, okay, heart, stop. And then the demon's dead. <laughs> he doesn't even have to do anything. All he has to do is think about it. But Krishna doesn't work that way. He makes it exciting. <laughs> he comes personally and he performs his pastimes, kills the demons and the devotees offer prayers and devotees get to worship the Lord. And the devotees get the association of the Lord and the devotees become elevated and happy. So he comes for to give his pleasure to the devotees. That's the main thing. Otherwise, there's no need to come. He can take care of demons without even coming. <laughs> like that. Okay, these are a little bit about Lord Varaha Dev. It's the most amazing incarnation. It's um, quite unusual. Um, I don't remember that particular... Do you do always remember... Vasati dasara sikare da nita valagna 
Shashi Nikalam Keva Leva Di Mahagdam Keshavadita Sukara Ruhupa Jai Jagadisa Hare Jai Jagadisa Hare Jai Jagadisa Hare Sukara, Sukha means boar. <laughs> He's taking the form of a boar and he's he's pleasing to the devotees and fearful to the non-devotees, demons like that. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have on this particular pastime. I could always illustrate something by repeating it. <laughs> to the degree that the heart becomes purified, to that degree we realize Krishna. So the purification process and the purification of the heart, both the process and the result, are the same. If you want your heart to become purified, hear and chant the glories of the Lord. This is the formula. This is the formula that works. <laughs> more and more and more. Okay, so I'll stop and see if there's any questions. Yes, okay. Hare Krishna. You can speak in Cro in Slovenia and someone will translate. I will try. Um, try English? Slovenian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe you're not okay. Slovenian, huh? <laughs> He's Slovenia. Okay. Mm. You talk about uh, Belikste. <laughs> Very nice Slovenian, I am. <laughs> For the first time I understood it. <laughs> Keep going, I like that version. Velikste govorili o muči svetega imena kot o muči Krishne. Yeah, non different. Yeah. Uh, ampak veliko krat se zgodilo, da so bili tudi devoti napadeni, celo ubiti, uh, isto se je dogajalo s templi, ki je tukaj Krišna. Devotis have been attacked, even killed, where is, even temples destroyed. Where is Krišna in all this? And Krishna is there, but maybe they forgot to take shelter of Krishna. <laughs> if one takes shelter of Krishna, Krishna will protect them. There have been attacks around the world. There have some, there've been some really vicious attacks. In uh, many countries around the world, our devotees have been attacked, and some have been killed. It's true. But. But Krishna says, if you take shelter of me, I give you protection. So we have to question the situation, whether those devotees actually took shelter of Krishna or not. Uh, but I can't judge the situation because I don't have any knowledge. But the principle is, uh, Rake Krishna Moreke, Mode Krishna Rakeke. That means if Krishna wants to kill you, there's nothing you can do to save yourself. And if Krishna wants to protect you, there's nothing in the in any of the three worlds that can harm you. So the question is, are we really taking shelter of Krishna in a serious way? Or are we forgetting Krishna and trying to save our sometimes when we get into a dangerous situation we try to save ourselves and we forget about Krishna. That won't work. <laughs> Trying to save yourself m may be fine, but along with praying to Krishna at the same time to help save you. So, uh, yeah. But Krishna does say he does protect a devotee's spiritual progress. Even if a devotee gets killed, still, that devotee doesn't go down in their spiritual life. They actually become elevated, actually. 
So the ways of the Lord are mysterious. He has two natures. One, he wants certain things to happen, and they happen. And two, he allows things to happen. He may not want those things to happen, but he allows them to happen because he knows they have a purpose for happening. It's called his permissive nature. He permits things to happen. So under the influence of the material energy, it works in a certain way. And a lot of times the material energy works to create situations. And the Lord doesn't interfere with the material energy because it's his energy anyway. So it depends on the circumstance, depends on the individual like that. So um, it's hard, yeah, I know you might say, well, I don't have any faith because if I see that, then what happens then, you know, uh, then it means the Lord is not, he's, no, he's there, but he always acts according to the situation. You have to have that faith, otherwise, if you don't have faith in the Lord, then you have faith in something else. Is that okay? Uh, thank you very much. Yes, I will process a little bit. Yeah, just play the tape back. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> We still have 10 minutes. Yeah. Mr. Marcel. <laughs> Marcel, right? No. no. Okay. Uh, give Marcel the microphone. <laughs> and he's Marcel the microphone holder. <laughs> um, thank, thank you for inspiring lecture. Um, you, you mentioned um, that we can absorb um, in Krishna's pastimes when listening to pure devotees um, who are talking about Krishna. Right. Um, and that becomes easier, yeah. Um, so um, I would like to ask what are some principles for effect effective listening? What are some principles for effective listening to pure devotees talking about Krishna? Hmm, here you go. That's a very... Do we have a first canto of Bhagavatam anywhere? Is the Bhagavatam here, the first canto? Mm, see if there's a first canto in there. I think there might be. No first canto. Okay, so in the first canto, one purport, your question is nicely answered. That's okay, Mokunda. By the time you get back, it'll be over. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it says that one should hear with rapt attention. You know what the word rapt means, R-A-P-T? It means with complete attention. One should hear with complete attention. And then it says, but one cannot hear with rapt attention unless one is purified in mind. And one ha before one can be purified in mind, they have to be purified in action. And then it goes on to say, and, and before you can be purified in action, you have to be purified in eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. In other words, you have to control those four bodily principles in a regulated way. That will help you to be pure in action, which will help you develop purity of mind. Then you can hear with rapt attention. <laughs> so it's a process. But after explaining the process, Prabhupada said, just try to hear. <laughs> that's, that's all. So do your best. But you should know that when you're trying to hear, if your mind is not purified, it'll jump around. You know, like I'm talking now and everyone's thinking, boy, what did they cook for Prashan, you know? <laughs> it's coming up soon. We're counting the minutes. Maharaj has got nine more minutes and it's now eight and a half. <laughs> it's getting better, getting closer. <laughs> so, yeah, the mind is chanchala. Krishna explains that in the Bhagavad Chanchala hi mana krishna pramiti balabhadriha tasyaham nigamam maya vayar idam saduskaram. 
Arjun speaks this, this verse. He says, Krishna, you're asking me to cure, control the mind, but I'm, it's like trying to control the wind. It's difficult. The mind is difficult to control, but Krishna says practice. He says practice and give up sense gratification at the same time. So by doing both of those simultaneously, practicing to hear and to practice Krishna consciousness and avoiding those things that take away from your bhakti, then, and of course you should know what they are, then you can make nice progress. And then hearing becomes more easy and more natural. Otherwise, at the beginning we have to force ourselves to bring our mind to where we want to bring it. But after a while, once it becomes controlled through the process of regular hearing, it becomes natural. It's a process, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Hmm? Non -sankirtan. Non -sankirtan. Okay, we can stop here. Okay, so I hope it wasn't a boring class. <laughs> but I hope it was. Because <laughs> it all, it's all about that transcendental war, Lord Sri Krishna. Jila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna Mahamantra Ki Jai.